evaluate the expressions, find the exact values. Here we have the inverse cosine of cosine of negative 37 tenths pi radians. Let's begin by sketching this angle in the standard position. Notice that negative 37 tenths pi radians is equal to negative three and seven tenths pi radians. If the angle was negative four pi radians, we would have two complete rotations in the clockwise direction. And because our angle is negative three and seven tenths pi radians, notice our angle is going to be three tenths pi radians short of two complete rotations in the clockwise direction. So sketching the angle, we begin along the positive x-axis. Now we rotate clockwise, three and seven tenths pi radians. So we have negative one pi, negative two pi, negative three pi. We need to rotate another seven tenths pi radians in the clockwise direction. And since seven tenths pi radians is more than one half pi radians or pi over two radians, this will bring us back into the first quadrant we rotate another seven tenths pi radians in the clockwise direction, which will bring us to approximately here, where again, this is three tenths pi radians short of two complete rotations in the clockwise direction, which is important because this tells us the reference angle, this acute angle here, is three tenths pi radians. Assuming this is a unit circle, the terminal side intersects the unit circle at this point. Well, let's call the ordered pair for this point x sub one comma y sub one. We're on the unit circle, x equals cosine theta and y equals sine theta, which means we can represent cosine of negative 37 tenths pi radians as x sub one. Let's go ahead and do that. This is equal to inverse cosine of x sub one. Inverse cosine of x sub one will return an angle in the interval from zero to pi radians, including the endpoints, that has a cosine function value of x sub one. So the angle must be in the interval from zero to pi radians, including the endpoints. We know any angle that has a terminal side of this ray will have a cosine function value of x sub one. And notice the reference angle of three tenths pi radians, this angle here, will have a cosine function value of x sub one and the angle is in the interval from zero to pi radians, and therefore this expression simplifies to three tenths pi radians. So let's take a look at one more example. We have inverse sine of sine of negative 36 elevenths pi radians. Again, let's sketch the angle in standard position. Notice that negative 36 elevenths pi is equal to negative three and three elevenths pi. In standard position, we rotate clockwise three and three elevenths pi radians. So we have negative one pi, negative two pi, negative three pi. We need to rotate another three elevenths pi radians past the negative x axis, which brings us to approximately here. This would be the terminal side of negative 36 elevenths pi radians. Because we rotated an additional 3 elevenths pi radians past the negative x-axis, we now know the reference angle of this angle here is 3 elevenths pi radians. We are in the second quadrant, so let's let the ordered pair for this point here in the unit circle be negative x sub two comma y sub two, because in the second quadrant, x is negative and y is positive. And since sine theta is equal to y, we can represent the sine of negative 36 elevenths pi radians as y sub two. Let's write the expression as inverse sine of y sub two. Inverse sine of y sub two will return an angle in the interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, including the endpoints that has a sine function value of y sub two, which means the angle must be in the interval from zero to pi over two or from zero to negative pi over two. Notice how the terminal side of the angle is not in the correct quadrant, but remember sine is positive in the first quadrant as well as in the second quadrant. So if we sketch the same reference angle in the first quadrant, we can find the angle that we need to evaluate inverse sine of y sub two. So the terminal side in quadrant one that will give us a reference angle of 3 11 pi radians would be this ray here 
where again the reference angle is still 3 eleventh pi radians. This point on the unit circle in the first quadrant would be x sub 2 comma y sub 2 because both x and y are positive. But notice how because the y coordinate is still y sub 2, the sine function value is still y sub 2 for any angle that has this ray as its terminal side. And therefore the angle in the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 that has a sine function value of y sub 2 is this reference angle of 3 eleventh pi radians. The given expression simplifies to 3 eleventh pi radians. I hope you found this helpful.